Hello, hello. My name is Cedric Easton, and welcome to the session. Uh, in this session, we're going to be talking about building and nurturing your jazz ecosystem. Uh, the fundamental purpose of this is so that you can take experiences from some of the things learned by our workshop guest and implement, maybe immediately implement, uh, or down the line implement to help build uh, a healthy community for your audiences, all right? Uh, the only thing I would ask is that some of you in the back, you may want to come to the tables because we're going to do this as a workshop breakout session. So we'll have round table leaders. So we're sort of going to move our chairs around a little bit. So if you'd like to engage in that way, I would ask if you're in, the, in that back row there to just maybe find a seat uh, at a table. We'll give you a few seconds to do that here if you'd like. Okay, we're gonna jump right in. We have a wonderful group of moderators. I'm gonna give a very brief introduction. Uh, all of them have beautiful and amazing careers, so it's kind of hard to, to uh, mention everything that they've done. So we have truncated versions so that we can be efficient with our time here. And it's in no particular order as well. Um, I would like to invite Janice Burley Wilson to the stage. Janice, pardon me. So as a cultural innovator uh, for almost two decades in Pittsburgh, uh, she is named the president and CEO of the August Wilson African American Cultural Center in 2017. Prior to this appointment, she worked for the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust for 15 years and was re responsible for developing some of the most successful and signature programs there. Uh, as one of the few women presenters in the country, Wilson is the founder and artistic director of the Pittsburgh International Jazz Festival, which will be celebrating 10 years in 2020. Please give her a hand. And you can grab your bags and pick any table in the room that you would like to sit at, and they'll come around you. So you pick, that's on you. And next again, we have Sunny Sumter. As executive director of the DC Jazz Festival uh, and the signature programs, the G DC Jazz Fest and year-round educational programs like the Charles Fishman Embassy Series and the DC Jazz Pricks International Band Competition, uh, also, as an accomplished a vocalist, sometimes performed across the United States and abroad and received such prestigious honors as the Benny Golson Award and the Aspen Institute Staff Achievement Award and more. Please give Ms. Sunny Sumster a hand. <laughs> you can pick where you'd like to sit. You can pick any, someone said come here. Gene Dobbs Bradford. As a president of Jazz St. Louis since 1999, he is most credited for moving the organizational's annual uh, contributed and earned income from 375,000 to 4 million. He has a very, yes, he has a very <laughs> robust portfolio, uh, has won such awards as the 40 Under 40, the Inclusive Leadership, and Outstanding Organization Awards. And he also has a degree in double bass performance from the Eastman School of Music. So Mr. Bradford, you can pick your seat. <laughs> Next we have Gerald Veasley. As a president of Jazz Philadelphia, Gerald's hopes is to celebrate Philadelphia's rich jazz history, established artists, and the next generation of Philadelphia brand bred musicians. Uh, as an accomplished musician and educator, he's both taught at uh, Philadelphia University of the Arts and recorded 10 albums as a leader, uh, and has also performed with the likes of McCoy Tyner, Joe Zawinul, Grover Washington, and many, many more. Please give him a hand, and you can select your seat. John Gilbreth. Yo. He 
He is a direct, the executive director sorry, of Seattle's Earshot Jazz Organization. They host 100 concerts annually, including Seattle's major jazz festival. He also hosts a jazz theater on Seattle's popular KEXP radio stream. Can you please give your hands for Mr. John Gilbert here? <laughs> you can take your sign and select your seat. And we have Laura Martinez. Uh, the CEO and founder of World Fusion Events since 2011, she has served as an industry artist, manager, curator, music education advocate, and cultural ambassador for 25 years. The World Fusion Events is an artistic management and events company dedicated to cross-cultural education and entertainment experiences. Please give her a hand and you can select your seat. Now, here's where it gets a little choppy. Uh, let's see, we have a few folks. I may ask you to move over at one table, just because we're really close. We need someone in the rear. Three, four. Maybe in the corner there. And then if you don't mind taking the rear. Okay, so I, I, what I would like you to do is try to move your chair into close proximity so you can hear uh, one, of the, one of the leaders around you. Thank you, thank you. This is very beautiful. I'm uh, particularly dealing with community. Mm -hmm. I see that it's forming and folks are talking. Uh, we wanted to give you at least 15 minutes uh, and we're on a bit of a tight schedule because of a gig in here tonight, but we wanted to give an opportunity for uh, everyone to hear from the different panelists. So I would start by asking, each one of you will kind of pass the mic down and you can take maybe 60 seconds to speak on something that you felt that was impactful, uh, that you think may be helpful to the entire group to hear you speak on. And then we'll have an open Q&A, at which point, if you, just, if, if you can make it to the mic, come to the mic. If you can project your voice loud enough, please stand up and do so. sitting around th thinking the same thing. How, what is an ecosystem? How do you create it? And uh, I talked a little bit about the program that I did in Portland, Oregon for Jazz Lincoln Center, uh, which was uh, broadcasting live stream programming. And out of that programming, so many different programs and community uh, organizations came together to help out, not only uh, with lending us the technology that we needed to live stream the program, but also uh, children's music program and just different marketing materials that we had not even thought about. And so in our discussion, I think the takeaway was really sit down and look at your community and see who can partner with you to reach your goal, whatever that may be, sell CDs, get people to come to your concerts, things of that nature. Yeah, um, on our table, we had, uh, the table is not large, but we had participants from China, from Spain, and from the Netherlands. And um, this is a, a, a great example of the, the, the globalization of the music. We also talked very seriously about the lack of specific um, secondary jazz education programs in the historically black colleges and how the art form uh, going up through institutions into uh, uh, a financial realm that makes it exclus exclusive for a lot of people. Um, and then we talked about the, um, the word ecology and kind of the organic nature of that just happening person to person to person to person. And um, there's no kind of large science uh, to do it. The, the way to do it is just get in and dig in. If you'd like to learn more, maybe volunteer for some of the organizations that are doing that kind of work in your communities, or um, just get in and, and um, get in and do the work in those areas that feel closest to your heart. That was great. 
Um, we also had uh, an international contingency in my group, as well as small town uh, American uh, representation from uh, cities like in the state of Wyoming. And I think the uh, couple of the things that really resonated out of my group is this notion of cross-pollinization of this music, that it really is not about just the uh, us talking to each other as jazz ambassadors, right, or, or our current uh, jazz community, but how we extend uh, and that really, as ed jazz ambassadors, um, we, you know, we said, a couple of us said, you know, in our towns, D.C. being mine, there's an annual um, article that comes out in the Washington Post that says jazz is dead. And I always send an email to the, to the writer and says, uh, why do you keep reporting this? In fact, jazz is thriving in our city. Such a, it is a jazz city, right? And, but still, Willard can tell you, Willard's an artistic director, it comes out every year. So I think that we have a mission as jazz ambassadors to really, um, you know, to be with our mega horns to talk about, wait a minute, this is such a thriving um, ecosystem, jazz is, right? That we are, I mean, there's so many people invited to the table. It's now a global uh, jazz community, but a jazz human community. People from all walks of life that are a part of this, and that was represented in this room if we look around at all the different um, ethnicities, the different ages, the different you know lifestyles. I mean, we are really uh, democracy at work, aren't we? And it's just super fantastic as we think about the neighborhoods of our jazz ecosystems, how we can dig deeper to reach out. And the last thing is that it's really important for us to be grateful and to be sure that you send that thank you letter we're so used to, to you know, talking by email to one another, but people love it when we pick up the phone and say thank you for attending, thank you for your contribution, thank you for your support, for your funding. This is one thing that we did last week as opposed to just sending a final report. So I really urge all, all of us to really you know, recognize that the community that supports us really do want to see and hear that we are absolutely grateful for the contribution that they give us. So we had uh, an interesting conversation because uh, I think a, a, a number of the participants shared the same concern, which is developing and uh, broadening audiences. We didn't have the a proper amount of time to delve into that, but it was, it was interesting to note that people uh, have the, the similar concerns. Um, I think one of the big takeaways was that when we started talking about successes or in early successes, I can speak first on behalf of Jazz Philadelphia. Uh, one of the things, we're a, a young organization, we've only been technically in existence in, since 2017, and we led with the spirit of generosity. We wanted to make sure we position ourselves not as a competitor for resources or funding, but to add value to the community. So we held two conferences back to back for which we didn't charge anything and brought a lot of wonderful speakers like uh, people you may have heard of like Sonny Sumter or Janice Burley Wilson. A lot of folks, uh, prominent people who came to give their, their time to offer wisdom. Um, the other thing I'll say about our initiative really quickly is that we also re respect the wisdom in the room. So it's the type of initiative that really respects the wisdom of, of the community. We never think of it as top down, but we convene folks to figure out what their learned experiences are and what they have, l what they have developed through years of toiling the fields in this art form, what they can bring to help us help them. Uh, in terms of early successes that we witnessed in hearing some of the, witnessed in hearing, that's a, <laughs> the, some of the things that we heard from some of the participants was uh, one gentleman shared uh, about a jazz camp that they instituted for the first, very first year and it was, it was very successful. And uh, they had this group of students who in five days were able to really play the heck out of Quincy Jones music, so that sounds like an early win to me. Uh, the other gentleman from Toronto uh, shared his experience of changing their business model of their, stop me if, I, if I'm incorrect at any point, uh, but not yet. Um, that they, they morphed from a business model which was primarily earned income and then decided to uh, double the number of free concerts and with the idea of reaching more people. And again, that kind of, I guess, what shines through is that spirit of generosity. Hello, everybody. Um, first, I want to thank Jazz Connect for um, putting all of this together. I mean, we had some great um, ideas that came out of our, um, our group. We had people from all over the country and um, talked about a lot of different things. We all agreed that it's important to 
um, be clear in your mission and then also to respect the other missions of the partners around the table and then create a, a common goal and then work together to help each organization meet those goals and that's how you create an ecosystem if you are able to um, work together and, and do that then you'll be successful. Some of the items or some of the topics that came up were ticketed versus free concerts. Um, what's the best model? We talked about pay what you can models. Um, we also talked about operating nonprofits like for-profit organizations. Some of the successes that we discussed in our group were community building, honoring the past, honoring people that have been neglected, using jazz to do that, um, scholarships, um, really pushing the grassroots and then cre creating alternative venues. Um, it's a really great group and one person in our group suggested that we needed to keep this going so Jazz Connect, you're going to have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> I didn't have an answer for that, but it was a great conversation. We had a, a very uh, a, a wonderful group. We, it was also international as we had someone from Canada uh, with us. Um, and. Uh, uh, we talked a lot about um, we, we we talked a lot about the importance of creating uh, the community of musicians and keeping that strong. And one of the things that uh, was emphasized a lot was the was the power of the jam session. And um, we talked about a number of different strategies for uh, for bringing those together. And uh, another thing that we talked about was what community partnerships uh, are are there outside of uh, the jazz world. So churches or women's groups. Um, is there a way that you can connect with them? And uh, finally, I think uh, in looking to the next generation of jazz, we talked about a number of different strategies for trying to meet people where they are. You know, if that means uh, that means having a DJ as, as, uh, after uh, as part of the jam session, moving the uh, moving tables out. You know, then that's uh, those those are the things that you have to do. Make sure that young people feel comfortable coming into your space. Uh, thank you all. Um, I'm looking at the time, and if there is one burning question. <laughs> okay, and also I just heard a statement about keeping this going. Oh, I'm sorry. How do we keep this going? I was actually going to speak to that. So again, I'm Cedric Easton. I'm the Associate Director of um, Community Outreach here at Jazz and Lincoln Center. If you're interested in keeping this conversation going, please bring your card. There's, I just put a table behind the piano. Put your card there. You have my personal commitment that we will figure out a way. We do not have a way yet, but we will make sure that happens. Once again, thank you for all our moderators here. Please give them a hand for their time. Thank you all as well for being flexible, trying out this workshop style. Enjoy yourself the rest of Jazz Congress. Thank you.